Welcome to SCOTUScast, a project of the Federalist Society for Law and Public Policy Studies. Our contributors join us from around the country to bring you expert commentary on U.S. Supreme Court cases as they are argued and decisions are issued. The Federalist Society takes no position on particular legal or public policy issues. All expressions of opinion are those of the speaker. Thank you for joining us for this post-decision episode of SCOTUScast. I'm your host, Spencer Karen. On December 10th, 2020, the Supreme Court decided Rutledge v. Pharmaceutical Care Management Association. The question presented was whether the Employment Retirement Income Security Act of 1974, also known as ERISA, preempts the state of Arkansas's Act 900, which regulates the price at which pharmacy benefit managers reimburse pharmacies for the cost of drugs covered by prescription drug plans. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit held that ERISA preemption applied. By a vote of 8-0, to zero, the Supreme Court reversed that judgment and remanded the case. Writing for the court, Justice Sotomayor indicated that Act 900, quote, has neither an impermissible connection with nor reference to ERISA and is therefore not preempted, end quote. Justice Sotomayor's opinion was joined by all other members of the court except Justice Barrett, who took no part in the consideration or decision of the case. Justice Thomas filed a concurring opinion. Max Schulman, an associate at Gibson, Dunn & Crutcher, joins us today to discuss this ruling. On December 10, 2020, the Supreme Court held that an Arkansas state law regulating prescription drug benefits is not preempted by the Federal Employee Retirement Income Security Act, or ERISA. The vote was 8-0, to zero, and Justice Sotomayor wrote the opinion for the court on behalf of all justices except for Justice Barrett, who had not yet joined the court when the case was argued and so did not participate in the decision. This decision was a clear victory for Arkansas that removes one obstacle to the state's efforts to regulate pharmacy benefit managers, or PBMs. However, the decision rests on relatively narrow grounds that leave much to be worked out by lower courts in future litigation. This case involves pharmacy benefit managers, which, as the Supreme Court put it, are a little-known but important part of the process by which many Americans get their prescription drugs. PBMs are third parties hired by benefit plan sponsors such as employers, to administer prescription drug benefits, including by negotiating the prices that pharmacies are reimbursed for the drugs they dispense. PBMs are used by about two-thirds of all large employers in the United States, and 95% of all retail pharmacies do business with at least one PBM. Arkansas and approximately 40 other states have passed various laws seeking to regulate PBMs. The Arkansas law at issue here attempts to regulate PBMs in a few ways. Broadly speaking, first, it imposes particular procedural rules that PBMs have to follow when negotiating drug prices with pharmacies. And second, it also imposes substantive rules on that process, including allowing pharmacies to refuse to dispense a drug if the reimbursement price falls below a certain level. So even if a benefit plan has different rules for what drugs it covers and how much it will pay for those drugs, and even if the PBM acting on the plan's behalf has negotiated with a pharmacy to follow those rules, Arkansas state law would supersede the terms of the plan on drug pricing. Our case began when the Pharmaceutical Care Management Association, PCMA, which is the National Trade Association of PBMs, sued the Attorney General of Arkansas, Leslie Rutledge, seeking to enjoin the state law on several grounds, including that it was preempted by ERISA. ERISA is a comprehensive federal statute governing employee benefit plans, such as pensions and health care plans. ERISA imposes a variety of substantive and procedural rules that apply to these plans nationwide. It also includes a broad preemption clause that prevents the states from passing conflicting or duplicative laws in the same area. ERISA Section 514A, codified at 29 U.S.C. Section 1144A, expressly preempts any and all state laws that, quote, relate to, end quote, benefit plans governed by the federal statute. So the question presented in this case is whether Arkansas law relates to ERISA benefit plans? And the Supreme Court answered no. Justice Sotomayor's opinion for the court essentially adopts the argument put forward by Arkansas and the United States as amicus curiae that this Arkansas law does not relate to ERISA plans because it's merely a form of cost or rate regulation, 
that may alter the economic incentives for plans, but doesn't force plans to adopt any particular scheme of coverage or benefit structure, which, according to the court, is the primary concern of ERISA preemption in this area. The court reasoned that this case is controlled by a 1995 Supreme Court precedent called Travelers, which held that ERISA does not preempt a New York state law that regulated the rates that hospitals can charge to patients, but did not impose any requirements on the benefit plan. According to the court, Arkansas's law is essentially the same because it also simply regulates rates. And in fact, in some ways, it's less intrusive than the law at issue in Travelers because it applies equally to all PBMs and pharmacies in Arkansas. On the one hand, this is a clear victory for Arkansas, which can now enforce its law regulating PBMs without federal ERISA preemption. However, the decision was decided on relatively narrow grounds. The justices' questions at oral argument indicated that they found this a very complex area in which they are likely reluctant to rule broadly and risk significant economic consequences for the great number of Americans, more than 178 million people, who depend on employer-provided benefits and the ERISA rules that govern them. I think that is arguably what led the justices to decide this case on the grounds that it is controlled by prior precedent, without reaching out to address several broader issues that will now be up to lower courts in the first instance. First, The decision may not necessarily dictate the same result for other states' laws regulating PBMs. If those laws do not share the same characteristics of Arkansas's that brought it within the logic of the traveler's precedent, then they may be distinguishable, and there is likely to be litigation over that question in other states. Second, we should remember that ERISA preemption is not the only obstacle to state regulation in this area. For example, PCMA also argued below in this case that the federal Medicare Part D statute preempts Arkansas state law insofar as it applies to Medicare prescription drug plans, which is a significant market. The Eighth Circuit agreed, and Arkansas did not appeal that holding, so the law remains enjoined to that extent, and this is not a complete victory for the state. There are also constitutional dormant commerce clause arguments to be made against these laws, among other claims. And third, the 8-0 vote in this particular case may paper over some serious divisions among the justices. Justice Thomas wrote separately to reiterate his previously expressed doubts about the court's ERISA preemption doctrine, which he believes has departed from the text of the statute. Justice Thomas suggests that the court should adopt an alternative approach that asks as a first step whether there is any ERISA provision governing the subject matter of the state law, and in this case he found there is not. No other justice joined this concurrence, but there were several questions at oral argument from Justice Alito and also Justice Kavanaugh that may suggest that they too may be interested in revisiting ERISA preemption doctrine more generally in an appropriate case. And of course, we have not yet heard from Justice Barrett on these issues, and it is possible that she too is interested in Justice Thomas's textualist approach. So while the decision in Rutledge may appear to show unity on the court on this issue, it's possible that breakdown is fleeting or illusory and we may see more division in future ERISA preemption cases. Thank you for listening to this episode of SCOTUScast. SCOTUScast is a project of the Federalist Society, a not-for-profit educational organization of conservative and libertarian law students, law professors, and lawyers, Founded upon the principles that the state exists to preserve freedom, that the separation of governmental powers is central to our Constitution, and that it is emphatically the province and duty of the judiciary to say what the law is, not what it should be. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast series, including SCOTUScast and Practice Group Podcasts, on iTunes or Google Play. For an archive of past podcasts, as well as audio and video of past Federalist Society events, please visit our website at fedsoc.org slash multimedia. That's F-E-D-S-O-C dot org slash multimedia. This has been a FedSoc audio production. 